All right, so we are on topic 2.2, and this one is all about air quality. So last time we were talking about water quality. This time it's quite natural we would talk about air quality. Uh, again, it's nothing overly new and nothing crazy that you're gonna be seeing in here, but it is still important to understand. Uh, so air quality can be measured by the amount of pollutants in the air, so that we can actually do like take air samples and measure the amount of whatever pollution that may be in there. And the other way is by estimating the amount of emissions from various sources. So if we look at a chemical factory uh, or a car factory or anything else, we can kind of look and say, okay, this is how much coal you're burning or how much whatever else you may be using or producing. And we can estimate that on a given day, this power plant will produce this amount of these chemicals based off of uh, their estimates, but they are relatively accurate because we know what the sulfur content is. For example, if the coal we may burn, that's how much it would put out into the atmosphere. Uh, again, this, th these quantities here, uh, air is mostly, it's 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, a little bit of uh, argon gas, and about 0.3% carbon dioxide, uh, and a little bits of hydrogen and neon. Now, I know that lots of you guys are going to say, well, Mr. S, that I mean, that's silly. Why are we so worried about carbon dioxide? Well, because too high quantities of carbon dioxide is really good for certain things, but not great for other situations. We'll stop there. So lots of different things that burn fossil fuels produce something called sulfur dioxide. This is one of the things that if you ever see, if your parents have a diesel truck and they complain about the, uh, the filter in their exhaust system, or maybe they've had it removed, that this is what is trying to get rid of sulfur dioxide. Uh, it is a major component of um, what's called smog. Uh, smog is uh, smoke fog basically and it gathers in haze over top of large centers because of the amount of smoke they produce. Uh, so the sulfur dioxide combines with the oxygen to make, su uh, to make sulfuric acid in the rain um, and that, uh, that sulfuric acid in the rain will cause problems we talked about last time when it accumulates in the lakes uh, but today we have things called scrubbers and those scrubbers are there to go and remove that sulfur dioxide from the air uh, or from the emissions of a factory and it can remove up to 99 percent of it which is awesome um, nitrogen oxides nothing crazy here again we see them all over the place they are produced by the burning of fossil fuels as well. Um, so both sulfur and nitrogen dioxides are carefully monitored, especially in cities and areas where industrial processes may release these pollutants in cities. And the main concern is the pollution from vehicles. So we measure this stuff by, uh, in certain parts of the world, they actually have emissions tests where they'll, uh, to be driving down the road and they'll have a thing that'll just pull an entire lane of the traffic over and they'll hook a tube up to your car and they'll measure how much emissions your car is putting out. Uh, the majority of the uh, emissions come from industrial processes, then transportation, then electrical generation. But as you can see, this has been going up uh, over the years and it continues to rise. And if you look this up, uh, it's grown even more substantially over the last little bit. Uh, carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide is a little bit different. Carbon monoxide, so when you burn fossil fuels or any other uh, hydrocarbon, it releases carbon dioxide as a natural byproduct. When a fuel source is burned improperly or incompletely, it will release carbon monoxide and that carbon monoxide uh, accumulates. It's heavier than air and so it settles in the low areas uh, and that so that carbon monoxide uh, can actually cause well, actually deaths. So if, if you live in the basement of your house, if your parents have moved you down to the basement, one thing you're lucky because in the summertime, it's not nearly as hot in the basement. Um, but you probably have a carbon monoxide detector in the basement. So you can see if your house is, uh, has any amount of carbon monoxide uh, that is gathering in the basement. Um, if you don't have that, you should look into one of those. They are very important. Um, and again, this is a pretty short video, but ground level ozone. Uh, ozone is uh, what makes up our atmosphere. Um, and it is three 
oxygen molecules bond together uh, and those ozone uh, molecules are problematic for living things they're great in the atmosphere terrible at ground level because you know we don't live in it oh, excuse me. so um and these vocs if you ever go and look at paint today paint nowadays they talk about voc voc free paint volatile volatile organic compounds these are things that react and create ozone um so we are trying to keep our environment as healthy as we can this one there's nothing too crazy i'll put up a short video on each of those things so you can see them um and you can hopefully know a little bit more about it all right guys have a good day